uh, has the RBA and uh, Treasury considered setting up an infrastructure bank and then using the profits from the infrastructure bank to fund a publicly owned bank and a development bank? Uh, have we considered? I um, would have to take on notice whether we've provided advice in relation to, to that. Well, I'll just point out, at, well, because I've asked both these questions in estimates, but, you know, APRA's macro to prudential control, the RBA only uses qualitative control. There's another lever called quantitative control as well, or controlling the volume of money in the system. And that was a recommendation in the 1937 Banking Royal Commission that the central bank should control the volume of credit in the system. I guess, you know, why doesn't, you know, RBA slash APRA um, Treasury look at using the volume, controlling the volume of credit in the system rather than outsourcing it to foreign banks? And then profits and using the profits from that you know, in a productive manner and using those profits to fund a development bank and, re and a public bank. I, th I think your question around how does the. Well, there's two elements to that that I'm struggling to piece together. Sorry, Senator. One is I thought about the volume control of money, which gets to how monetary policy is set, and I might leave. Um, my RBA colleague to offer any sure. views on that, yep. but, but in terms of the, you know, setting up a, 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 a public bank, that's that's a question of, of, of government policy. Right. Okay. I'll, I'll take that up with the treasurer. And, and just in terms of volume of money, what's the RBA's view on that? Well, I think that we've um, shown that, that we've we've taken approaches to the. Uh, you know, to, to needing to stimulate the economy through the you know, crisis period of the last four years in, way, in ways that uh, were different to what had been experienced in well, well, Australia in the, in, the, in the previous 20 years. Uh, but that's a very good question. I mean, you printed $300 billion and paid it to people to stay at home and watch TV and be terrorised by state premiers. My, my point is, if you can do that for consumption, why not do it for production? Uh, and say, for example, lend money to a state or federal government to build a dam or a power station rather than just to sit at home and, and do nothing. What, what, why can you do it for consumption? So I, I think, as, um, as my colleague was saying, that it was a very uh, crisis economy at the time. There was huge levels of uncertainty. And in that period, the, we went to um, very exceptional policy measures. And that, we're living in a cost of living crisis now. We've got power prices through the roof because there hasn't been enough investment in baseload energy for the last 20 years, surely this would warrant um, you know, some emergency productive stimulatory measures to go out and build some power stations. We've got a pad out there at Coden Creek in Queensland. You can just put a power station 400 million tonnes of coal and could deliver more energy into the market you know, within a matter of five years. I mean, why, why, did, why is it OK to print money just to spend, it, you know, pay people to stay at home but not to actually fund the construction of sovereign infrastructure, which will help our regions and make them more profitable so banks stay open? I, I think from our perspective it's back to the, um, you know, what, what should be happening in a, in a more of a normal part of the uh, economic cycle than was happening in that period during 2020, but 2020, 2021. Okay, governments building infrastructure is a normal part of the economic cycle. I mean, we've got a massive, and this is a Treasury policy, they're pushing a big Australia policy. We've got half a million immigrants in the last year. You know, what are we doing to build infrastructure in those regions so the regions maintain, you know, we can attract people out there and keep the branches open? Senator, you're taking me outside my field of expertise when it comes to the Australian government's approach to infrastructure spending. Um, so, how that works is managed by uh, another department. Um, sure. And, okay. and your sort of propos your proposition is um, setting up a kind of a. Uh, yeah, I guess my previous evidence was I'd have to take on notice any work that we've done looking at setting up a, a an investment funding vehicle. Yeah, sure, because one of the reasons why the branches are closing down is some of these towns are getting smaller because the essential services are drying up. They're drying up because of the lack of infrastructure spending. I guess that's my point. And, you know, is that something that, you know, should be on the, the radar of the RBA slash Treasury rather than just using the blunt instrument of qualitative easing, which is a spe speculative measure at the end of the day, and a blunt measure smashing demand rather than increasing supply? But I'll leave that as a comment. Thanks, Chair. Authorised G. Rennick, LMP Chermside.